It is not even Saturday, but we are going to talk science today. And what we're going to talk about is happens each and every hockey off season I've had a lot of questions about creatine and because my buddy at the gym took creatine and he gained uh, six pounds of muscle in a week and he feels amazing <laughs> and you know you've been there and 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 I want it too uh, so I'm glad that people ask because it means that they at least are like, hmm, is this going to be helpful or harmful? Is this something I should take or shouldn't take? So I'm going to explain to you, first of all, how it works. It isn't a stimulant. So when your, uh, you know, buddy takes it in his pre-workout shake and it's like, oh, I've got so much energy. Either it's a placebo, which is fine, or there's something else in that pre-workout shake that maybe shouldn't be in that pre-workout shake that's giving him that feeling. Well, let's break down how exactly creatine works. Be prepared to be either fascinated or bored, depending on whether you are a physiology geek or not. Let's start with a little bit of muscle physiology. When I was in grad school, I took an entire course on skeletal muscle and how it works. And when we got to the end of it, they were like, and then this happens and we don't really know why. And that was it. <laughs> it was like, are you kidding? Are you kidding? it's like that movie, The Bridge to Terabithia. If you haven't seen it yet, spoiler alert. <laughs> anyway, you think you're just watching a nice, happy kids movie and then you're like, what just happened? So anyway, uh, so this might be upsetting to some of you because we're going to cover a little bit of that part. But this is, uh, this is a myofibril. So Z line to Z line is a myofibril. So this is like, I got out my electron microscope and I zoomed in and this is like, I have a very good electron microscope and I took this picture of a myofibril. So this is like, you've got your muscle fiber, you've got your fascicles, you've got, in your fascicles are all little myofibrils. This would be your actin filaments. Uh, this is an actin filament. This would be your myosin. Myosin is thicker. These will be your Z lines. This person's done a little bit of a workout lately because they got some delayed onset muscle soreness because Z lines under like electron microscope will, will sort of be um, blurred a little bit, a little disrupted uh, when you have delayed onset muscle soreness, when you have a little micro trauma. But so these are the two filaments. And then on the myosin, there are these myosin cross bridges and they're kind of like a, like a globular head that bonds to the actin. And then when our muscle contracts, it, they go, Err. <laughs> and that's what, you know, that's what brings, you know, there'd be another actin filament down here, you know, and that's what sort of shortens your muscle and makes your muscle contract. Um, now there'd be more than two. <laughs> so this isn't exactly anatomically, physiologically exactly right, but uh, you get the idea. So these are on the myosin, they grab onto the actin, they go, and that's how your muscle contracts. So then, okay, that's great, but actually if we want to do more work, we have to disconnect, swivel again, grab another bonding site, and, and swivel again to sort of keep going. Otherwise, we're stuck. Fun fact, um, if you get tetanus, this is why it's so important to get your tetanus shots. Get your tetanus shots. Um, if you get a tetanus shot, you basically die of like lock jaw of, of tetany. Um, so all your muscles contract. If you've ever seen a picture of someone who's died from tetanus, freaky, <laughs> really freaky. But what happens is those get bonded and they can't undo. So all of your muscles in your whole body get in a contracted state and you actually literally die. Get your tetanus shot. <laughs> so how do, we, how do we not end up like that? Cause that does not sound very cool. What happens is ATP, so if you've taken any like high school even physiology, you've probably heard of ATP. ATP is sort of what, you know that it's sort of the energy molecule of the muscle, but, but you don't really know how it works, do you? Do you? Well, an ATP, so adenosine triphosphate, as the name implies, it's an adenosine molecule with three phosphates. What it does is it cleaves off one of these phosphates it donates it here, it binds 
somewhere in this globular head thing of a boob where I can't exactly remember which side it bonds on, but it bonds on that. It lets this get released so that it can do more muscle action. So that's all ATP done. Like I thought it would be like, then there's a little mini explosion and it's like, no, it just helps it release. Um, <laughs> this is where, this is where in our course it's like, and then it swivels and we don't really know why. All right, good. That was thousands of dollars well spent, but it was a fascinating course. It was really fun. So that's what ATP does. So when it does that, when it donates that phosphate, it becomes ADP, an adenosine with two phosphates and a frowny face attached where the other phosphate used to be. Maybe not a frowny face, but let's just picture it like that. So here's where uh, creatine comes in. So we consume creatine. Creatine bonds a phosphate to make what's called phosphocreatine. Isn't science fun in that it makes a lot of sense, like science should. So, uh, and, and it is in your muscle cell. So, ADP is like frowny face. Oh, if only I had another phosphate, then I could do more work. And possible creatine comes on, I was like, dude, I got an extra phosphate, right? I don't know, I don't even know where it came from, just follow me around. I didn't ask why, like we're not friends or anything. So it's like, I will take that. So then this phosphate, Creatine donates its phosphate, boom, boom. It jumps back onto an ADP, which then makes an ATP, which then it's gonna like, oh, okay, well, let's cleave you off and go over here so that that thing will, so the creatine's like, I just, I gave you that and then you just gave it away again, huh? Like what? We're not friends anymore. <laughs> but that, that's literally how it works. So then I guess you need to know that there's basically essentially three different energy systems. Your aerobic energy system, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Your <laughs> anaerobic energy system, of which you have two. You have anaerobic alactic, which means you do not produce any lactic acid. Woohoo, we love it. Lactic acid or the physiological pathway that develops lactic acid is also what creates that as like burning feeling in your muscles, boo, you know, so that's a problem. But anaerobic alactic, no lactic acid. So yay, we love it. That's what this energy system is, the anaerobic alactic system. It's using this small amount of stored ATP in your muscle to quickly psh, 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 replenish this and help you do work right away without any of that pesky burning sensation. This energy system only lasts like five seconds. So this is the energy system that, you know, when uh, we were just lazing around on the savanna, lying in the grass, and a lion jumped out <laughs> of the jungle. Um, yeah, a lion is, I was gonna say, wait, are is it tigers or lions? Tigers are only in India. Lions are in the savanna, so we're good. So a lion jumps out of the jungle at us and we're like, Wah! and we jump up and we take off and we try to outrun the lion for about five seconds and then we're exhausted and then the lion comes and eats us anyway. But that's the energy system. So this only lasts about five seconds. So it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't like, oh, have so much energy. Um, and again, it's not a stimulant. It doesn't make you feel more energetic, but it might let your muscles do a little extra work, which might mean, if I'm doing a speed workout, I might be able to replenish this system. This system replenishes in about, about 99% replenishes in with three minutes of rest. So that's why too, when we're working speed and power, we need lots of rest. Whether you think, oh, I don't feel tired. I know, but we need this energy system to be ready to go. But taking creatine tops it up, maybe helps it recover a little bit quicker. So then maybe I'll get a little bit, like one more better quality rep in if I'm doing low rep strength training, like your max strength phase or your peak power phase, or if I'm doing, yeah, like low volume, high intensity power or speed training, it might help me get, you know, this much more quality out of each set or out of the first half of my workout or whatever, which brings me to the other part of creatine. Creatine is probably the most studied sport supplement ever. <laughs> and it's been studied for years and years and years. You know, 
20 plus years ago when I was in grad school, they were studying it and it had already been studied for probably 10 years before that. So this is, you know, it's been thoroughly studied for the last 30, probably 40 years. It works in doing this. It's not a steroid, it's not a stimulant, but it works in doing this. It's safe, it's relatively cheap. So should you use it? The answer is yes and no. I usually don't bring up the topic until a, a, a goalie is about 16 years old. Once they're 16 years old, if they're doing everything else and we're looking for that small, small advantage, then it might be a time when we say, hey, let's, maybe we'll have a chat with mom and dad and see if this is something that we want to do. Uh, you can get creatine naturally. If you eat red meat, you are getting creatine. You probably are not creatine deficient and your body won't overload creatine. So it's not like the more creatine you eat, the more phosphocreatine is in your muscles. It doesn't work that way. Your body has a thing called homeostasis, which means I like to be at this level and that's where I like to be. So you're not gonna overload this system. You would take five grams a day, just creatine monohydrate. Don't, if you get into something that sounds fancy and in it, I probably wouldn't because it probably means there's something in it that maybe, maybe shouldn't be in it and she shouldn't be taking. But five grams a day of creatine monohydrate. If you regularly eat red meat as part of your diet and you're not insufficient in any way, you're going to pee that back out down the toilet. So worst case, you're going to pee away your hard earned money. Let's talk quickly about the weight gain because you will see weight gain for every gram of creatine that enters your muscle cells it takes with it five grams of water so i think sometimes when there is that initial weight gain of a pound or two uh in the first week people think it's muscle obviously you always think it's muscle but it's, but it's water weight i'll also mention uh that there is some anecdotal reports so that means it's not been proven by science but people have said like hey when i took creatine uh i strained my hamstring or my hip flexor there's anecdotal reports of increased risk of muscle strains when people are taking creatine um it hasn't really been my experience i i've had one athlete they they were away they were at college training um and they were using creatine and they strained their hamstring so it's a little hard to say because i'm not sure exactly what they were doing they were like training with their team but the goal there you know and even the athletes that i trained at revolution when they were in the gym with me all the time i i knock on wood haven't had any any of those happen with the athletes I'm directly supervising, but it is something to consider. And it does make sense. Like if I'm taking in five more grams of water into a muscle, now it's not going to be like one mus, you know, one muscle necessarily, but if I'm adding more fluid to my muscle tissue, that, that it's like a balloon, right? It gets a little bit stiffer. The amount of water isn't really that much but it you know it kind of makes sense like it's like yeah I, I could see how that could happen so there is uh something that you want to kind of weigh in terms of risk reward before you decide and I probably would suggest you know make sure you're drinking enough water which you should be anyway the biggest the most beneficial ergogenic aid so performance enhancing substance is actually water being hydrated is the number one thing you can do to improve your performance so Put that in your pipe and smoke it. So again, should you take it? If you are, so here's a little quiz for you. And if you answer no to any of these questions, then the answer is no, you shouldn't take creatine. Are you following a goalie specific? So now I'm not talking about going to the gym and working out because that's something very different than doing the type of training that you need to perform better on the ice. So are you following a proper goalie specific off ice strength and conditioning program? And are you doing it? So are you doing, that means are you doing your mobility, functional strength, goalie specific speed, goalie specific agility? Are you doing all that on a consistent basis? If you're not, then no, <laughs> don't waste your money on this. Start doing that. That is a big rock. What's your nutrition like? Are you getting enough calories? Are you eating whole foods, a lot of plants and vegetables? When I look at your nutrition recalls, some of you don't eat any fruit or hardly any vet like the vegetables you eat come on a sub. So are you eating whole foods, vegetables? Um, are you getting a lean protein, a healthy fat, and uh, a healthy carbohydrate with each meal? 
Are you eating breakfast? If you're, especially if you're a younger goalie, if you're, not, if you're an adult goalie and you're trying to lose weight or whatever and you have different ways of eating, that's maybe a bit of a different issue. But if you're a young goalie who's trying to gain some muscle and some strength, then you should be definitely eating breakfast. Are you getting sufficient sleep? Everybody's different in how much sleep they need, but are you getting at least seven to nine hours of sleep most nights? I know that sometimes on the weekend we like to go out and do the party hardy. I was young once. I vaguely remember what it was like. Ah, uh, to be young. So that's why I'm gonna say most nights. So, you know, five, let's say five days of the week, maybe you let her rip a bit on the weekend. Yeah, and that leads me to another thing. Like, are you crushing booze on the weekend? If you're crushing booze on the weekend, start with not crushing booze on the weekend before you start trying to take a supplement to make yourself better. I think those are the, those are the big rocks. So are you doing those three big things? If yes, okay, then let's, you know, those are, those are like big things. This is, a little advantage but if you're doing all those other things you're doing them consistently yeah okay now let's start looking at the little advantages you know same goes something like well should I use a cold tub should I use a warm tub should I for my muscle development it's like are you doing proper workouts are you getting proper nutrition are you getting enough sleep our muscles get bigger when we're sleeping, <laughs> not when we're in the gym. When we're in the gym, we're actually causing some micro trauma to those muscles. When we sleep and when we have the proper nu nutrients and building blocks in our body, then our, and that's not like a Nature Valley granola bar, even though it says it's from Nature Valley, I don't think Nature Valley is so natural. So, <laughs> you know, if we're putting in the right building blocks, we go to sleep and then our body like psh, inside, we spring to life and it's like, okay, Let's repair all this. Let's get this ready to go. So tomorrow, Maria can go to the gym and crush it again. That's what you need. This was fun. Question for you. Let me know if you want me to bring back this Science Saturday. We haven't done Science Saturday in a long time because it got a little busy. Welcome to your Science Saturday. Today we are talking about going for a long run. Because shouldn't we go for a long run if we want more stamina? Apparently you just run for an extended period of time. The answer would be a uh, no, no, no you shouldn't. But if you really want me to bring back Science Saturday, or maybe we could just have a science segment every few weeks in a video, let me know. Drop a comment below. Let me know what you think about Science Saturday. Let me know what you think about the creatine. I'm not saying creatine's bad. I'm not saying you shouldn't take creatine. Creatine works. It's safe as far as we know to this point, but it's been studied over the last 30 plus years. It's relatively cost effective. Just get the plain old creatine monohydrate from like a reputable brand. Uh, if it says like animal monster stack rage, <laughs> don't get that one. Get the one with just the boring label that says creatine monohydrate on it. Uh, five grams and don't let them upsell you at the health food, at the, you know, sports supplement store. Just Get the basics. Five grams a day, you don't need to do a loading phase. You should have it with a rather higher glycemic carbohydrate so that it's gonna get absorbed into your tissues a little bit quicker. But having said that, a lot of you don't need it because you're not moving any of the big rocks yet either. So I hope that helps. If you found that helpful or informative or, or like, but what, what do you mean they, we don't know what happens? But I, I, I might have to go back to university. Maybe they know by now, who knows? But hit me with a like. If you have any questions about this, hit me with a comment. If you haven't subscribed already, what's your problem? <laughs> and if you haven't subscribed already, you might not know that if you hit the bell, you'll find out about new videos before anybody else. Go forth and conquer. I will see you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel.